Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Acres. My name is Jordan. These are my kids. And we are going to be trying to uh, redo this clutch in the tractor today. So let's see what happens. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to do it. And I've read through all the instructions that I have. These are the instructions that Thomas sent me. So I read through all that and I read through his notes on what to do. And I also had an operator's manual for this and it does give a brief little summary of how to adjust the clutch and how to replace the discs. So it's a very simplified version, but hopefully we can figure out between all this stuff of how to actually do this. I also have a new uh, uh, brake disc pad thing for right here as well, which this I think is not supposed to be that loose but I don't know if there's supposed to be a bushing in here or if the bushing in there is just really worn but it kind of looks like the bushing in there is just really worn so I might need to look into trying to replace that as well but we're just going to take it apart and see I think we'll start with the clutch discs because technically I don't think we need to take this apart but Thomas was saying that there is like a bearing in here that should be greased because it's only greased like after it comes out of the factory, but it doesn't need to be greased often. So I have to take something apart here to do that. So I don't know. We're just going to start um, getting into here and see what we can take apart and see what we can find. All right. So first thing, we're going to take these uh, cutter pins out of here and then take these nuts off and then this whole... Uh, outside things should come off and there should be some springs in there that we'll replace as well. All right, so first we are going to take these out. Just kind of pinch them down there and then we should be able to just pull them out, hopefully. Like so. Yep, just pick one and start loosening it. Like that? Yep. You got it. Yeah, we gotta take it all the way off. You can go faster if you want. You can probably take it off by hand now. Can you loosen it? There you go. Take it all the way off. Or maybe we just take it most of the way off and leave it on there a little bit. Yeah, that's probably good. Let Cooper do one. Do that one right there, buddy. Make sure it's on there all the way. There you go. Here. Nope. Here. Get over next to it like there. Hold on. Right there. Now get a nice pull on it. There you go. I'm just doing that so fat. You're doing it very good. Ah. Alright, very good. Thank you. Washer on each one of those, apparently. You got the other one? Thank you. There's up there. Yeah. There should be springs on here. Yep. yep. There's yeah. the springs, and then there's a disc here, looks like. They're all dirty. We're going to leave it all together so we know how it came off. But we'll just set this aside. Down here. And then we'll just take everything off in order and lay it on top of that. Wow. So that is the friction, or this isn't the friction disc, this is the actual metal plate that goes in between them. But it looks decent. The inside's a little shiny. Doesn't help that this tractor sits a lot. Oh, there's a, there's some corn in here. <laughs> Ooh, ew. It's like a mouse nest or something. Ew. Ooh. Definitely a mouse nest in there. <laughs> Ew. There's a 
mouth in there. Interesting. This disc. Now These actually don't look terrible. I, I mean, we'll have to compare them to the new ones that we have. But I'm not 100% sure how much material was on here originally. Yeah, there's like little notches where bolts with nuts can go on and then you pull it off with that. So yeah, we need to take this bolt out and this washer and then we can pull this whole uh, assembly out. I might just have to get my impact gun on there and take that off because I can't keep it from rotating. Probably should have taken this off first while I could uh, have the uh, clutch engaged. I think when we put it back on, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Amazing how nice modern tools are. So you can see how there's a little notch right here. That's where you're supposed to put your bolt with a nut on the back side and then one down here as well. So we're gonna get a nut and a bolt and then you just push it against there and then that pulls the whole assembly off of this spline right here. All right, I found these two bolts. This one I found a nut that fits behind there. You just slide it right in there from behind and then thread it in, it'll work. I didn't have another one of those nuts though. I only had this one, but this built-in washer on it is too big to slide in there. But I think if I put the nut behind here and then slide it over, I should be able to actually get it in there. So I think it's working. coming off because each time I tighten one of these, the other one gets loose. Oh, that's not loose now. Hopefully I'm not putting pressure on anything I shouldn't. should be fine. So we're just doing a little bit on each side. I don't want to break anything, so hopefully this works. Seem to be getting easier. Oh, I saw something move right there. Yeah, it's coming off. All right, we got it. It's moving. Yeah, it's definitely moving. All right, I think we got it. Yeah. All right, it's loose. Looks like there's little shims or something in there. Strange. I wonder if it was loose and they put those in there to keep it tight. I don't really know. But there we go. That worked. There's a bunch of those little shims though. Looks like they put one in every single one of those grooves. So I'm assuming there's just a bunch of play on there or something or these are just factory like that I don't really know maybe I should look at the tear down but there we got it off and we have our last disc right in here I think in order to do the bearing that like Thomas was um, saying he had done is actually behind the pulley but we need to figure out how to uh, get that off so judging by these instructions on here it says this uh, fork assembly in here needs to be removed before the pulley can come off. So I figure with this far, we might as well try to take the pulley off. If we run into issues, I'm just gonna leave it. I don't wanna have to break something or, you know, something like that. So we're gonna take this assembly off here now, and then like these four bolts here to take this off. So first we need to take this linkage out here, this little pin, which there's not a cotter pin on the bottom of it. So hopefully that should be fairly easy to get out of there. I am unable to get this pin out. I can't get that pin out because I can't get that cotter pin out. And this, for some reason, is threaded in from this way, but this is round. So I tried tapping on this because I thought maybe it was just corroded, but that won't come out. So I figured it has to be threaded, but I don't know how because that's round, so it doesn't make sense. 
I can't get any of that linkage off of there. So I think I'm just gonna try to take these four bolts off and see if we can just take this out without removing that linkage. But that's kind of the last resort. So let's see what happens. Fairly loose, so that's good. Problem is getting that one out is gonna be tricky. I might be able to sock it back there though. I like to say that. Yep, this is a ratchet. This is a socket extension, I guess you could say. This is a socket. There we go. All right, hopefully we can get all these out all the way. It's always best to start with the hardest one because then everything gets easier after that. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> it's not always the case, but there. I don't know if that's Loctite or mud, but that looks terrible though. <laughs> I don't know what's on that. That's strange. Probably just getting myself into a world of trouble here, but yeah, that was what I was afraid of. Oh, this fell. But the problem is I can't get that pulled off anymore. So, it's kind of what I was afraid of, like this linkage has to come apart. Oh, I guess I can get to this easier now. I'm gonna try to take this cotter pin off here now because it's way more accessible. I feel like it might just be breaking. Whoop, got it. Yay! Ugh. Finally. We got her. Progress. <laughs> All right, we should be able to get that pin out now because it should be loose in there. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> should be able to just get a little punch here, tap this pin out. Yay. Got it. And then that should make this bar free. Let's get all the tools off of it. <laughs> Bar should come off of here now, which it does. That's loose, so now all of this should be able to come off of here, hopefully, depending on what's in here. All right. It's out. So this is what came out. This is the little fork or whatever. So we gotta make sure we didn't drop anything because I heard something wanna fall in there but this is out so let's see if we can get the pulley off and stuff now so you can see that's where the fork slid on there and then there's a gear for some reason and but we should be able to pull all that out from where the pulley's at so I guess let's see if this comes off I guess I don't know I don't know how it works the manual or the operator's manual I had did say that this just would slide off basically. Yeah, okay. Well, that was easy. <laughs> it does just slide off. Yeah. That is somewhat heavy. Set that down. So that is all off of there. Everything looks decent. I don't know. That's a little yucky, I guess you could say there. But. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't look like anything fell off either, so it must have just been the sound of the metal touching or something, but that all looks good. This all looks good, I guess. Should probably try to take some of this off. Apparently this is a bushing here, which I need to look and see which one Thomas was saying that I need to um, lubricate, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with all of this. I assume these are all paths for oil and stuff, so. I don't know, let's get over to the workbench and then um, look at the manuals and see what they say. So after looking at stuff, I'm pretty sure this is the bearing right here that doesn't get oiled very often because it also is extremely dry. Like, there is no lubrication on it at all. So, I mean, it still feels fine, like it rolls and everything, it's not seized or anything like that, but I could definitely see why that needs to uh, 
have some lubrication done to it. So I tipped this up so all this can uh, drain out of there, but I was going to spray the bearing down with some brake clean to try to clean it up a little bit. And then after all that drains out the bottom of the hole here, then I'm going to uh, put some lubricant in there. It's very dry now. All right, that is all dry now. Looks to be fairly cleaned up now. So I'm gonna get some grease and grease that up. Some high temp multi-purpose grease here. And we're just gonna do this. Thomas is probably right. This probably hasn't been greased since it was new. So I'm sure that will be plenty, honestly. Got all that grease in there. So should be good to go now. He was talking about greasing these up, which I'm not, I think that's, yeah, that's what this pivot's on. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure exactly what to grease there. I mean, I can just grease the moving components, but they're kind of back their ways. I don't really want to take them all apart, honestly. I could put a little bit of grease on that pin. Maybe that's what he was talking about, just greasing this little pin up here. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it, though. I think the main thing he wanted me to grease up was that bearing there. So I got that done. That should be really good. I think we're going to get this back on there now. Slide this back on here now. Try not to hang anything up. There we go. It needs to engage with that gear. There we go. Yeah, I don't think that matters where that gear lines up because this isn't what turns on the crankshaft. That spins really nice now. I don't know if the lubrication on that bearing helped. I mean, it probably did, but there is an alignment here on the uh, friction disc part. So we got that right here. And I did find where Thomas ordered these from. It was just a Steiner tractor. I don't know if he ordered them from there, but um, these exact discs were on there and it said the grooves need to go towards the drive pulley, which would be the pulley that we're gonna put on next. So, so this will go on like that then, which I don't know what these little grooves are for, but we're not gonna worry about that. So that's on there. Now we gotta get put the, we gotta put the drive pulley on. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little V right here. And there's a V on that pulley that goes on too. And those need to line up. I did read that in the instructions. So the V is right here on here. I, don't, I really don't know if you're gonna be able to tell that, but there's a V right here, there's a V down here. So this needs to go like this. And I, there are shims that are supposed to be on here that I took off, you know? But I'm gonna set this on there and see if it's just loose or what. It goes on, it's just temperamental. Yeah, see? It's loose, and I guarantee you that's why all these were on there, and I bet you these are not factory. <laughs> and quite honestly, this could probably be replaced because these little gears on here as well have um, some pretty good wear on them as well. But I think we're just gonna put all these shims back in there and hope and pray it all works okay. Those are all in. Yeah, it's definitely tight. Well, I'd say that's probably good. So, I mean, this was kind of a taper fit or this is a taper fit, so that should work. Now we need to put that bolt back on and fasten that down. I also need to make sure that this disc in the back is in the right spot. Here's the bolt, which honestly we probably shouldn't be doing this. We should probably put this back together before 
we get this on too far. I'm gonna just get this snug down a little bit. There. Snug down a little bit. We'll have to re make sure we torque that to whatever the spec is. It's probably just boot and tight because I didn't see anything in the manual when this was supposed to be taken apart. So probably just gonna tighten that down tight. Let's get the rest of this assembly put back together. This part right here was actually slid in. So if I would have put the fork back on, it would have been in between here and it would have ruined something. So make sure this is slid all the way out and then the fork goes in that groove there. So gotta make sure we line that up right when we put it back together. If you're wondering where my kids are, they both got bored and went back inside. So it's just me, sorry. <laughs> all right, I almost forgot that we got a new uh, brake pad for this. So we need to swap that out real quick as well. So it should be fairly simple. I think we just need to bend these metal tabs up and it should come off of there. I don't know which ones you're supposed to bend, but probably doesn't matter. Ta-da! Yeah, this one was probably getting pretty low because it was hitting on the metal, which was also making grooves in the pulley. So good thing we're replacing that. So yeah, this one has quite a bit more material on it, as you can see. So that should be nice. It's also, this kind of looks like it's a, like a fabric, or this looks like more like a ceramic pad. So oh, we'll see. So set this on here somehow. And then we'll probably bend the two end tabs over, I assume. I really would just like to do that, but It actually works fine. That works just fine, actually. <laughs> It'll be all right. Kind of loose. Seems pretty decent. Is this the same? Yeah, I mean, that should be fine. It's not gonna fall off of there, that's for sure, so. Looks good. Much better. New gasket for Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, once again. Perfect. Oh, hmm. Oh, yep, there we go. Goes on a specific direction, apparently. Let me get a bolt in here to start this. Get that gasket on there. And then the tricky part is getting this all in here lined up all at once. Okay, well, this is tricky. That's going to be in the way. That's probably going to be in the way. If I didn't have a million tools sitting here, it'd probably be easier. <laughs> Make everything so hard on myself. gaskets lining up. I didn't actually take this apart, but I'm just not going to because, yep, <laughs> just because. Oh, that's probably why. There. There. That's why I didn't want to go on. The lever was in the wrong spot. All right, got them all started. Gaskets in the right place. That should be good to go. Um, we just need to put this uh, pin back in here. Line that up. There's a bushing in this rod on the end. So we technically could replace that, get rid of some of the slop, but honestly, I'm not really too worried about it. You can see this pin has a big groove in it as well, probably from that bushing. So honestly, if we just replace this pin with one that is 
you know, not worn down, probably wouldn't even have to deal anything with that bushing. So we are missing one of these springs. There were only two in the box, and I went back and looked at some other video I had taken of when I opened this, and there were only two in there. So either um, Thomas accidentally only ordered two, or more than likely there were they probably forgot to put one of the springs in the box, but I don't have the packing list. I must have thrown it away or something because I don't want to use only two of these and then use one of the old ones because they're probably going to have a different spring rate. So I'm just going to use the old ones for now until I can get another spring and then I can take this back off and replace them. This is really easy to get off, so it's not a big deal. So for now, let's get the rest of this clutch put back together and we should be good to go. I also was looking at this. Thomas made a note to make sure that these weren't worn down really bad and these actually aren't. They're actually in really good shape still. There's hardly any wear on them, so that's really good. So let's get this put back together. So this goes on next and I don't believe there is a front or back. They are both the same. Get this started out. Now oh, there's a little bit of stuff in here Just some of their coating they put on there is kind of in there so it should be good now there we go what are we hitting on it's not wanting to go all the way on not sure what's going on all right we have the pulley off again because these studs are not spaced correctly apparently but the old disc that sat in here sits nice and flush in here and goes down all the way and is nice and loose and can float the new one is a little tight and these i feel like shouldn't be so tight like they should be able to rotate and stuff in here so like this one moves a little bit but it's still pretty tight so my plan is to take these out and the threads are also not super great on here so I was going to chase the threads on them. I did notice you can actually buy these brand new but I'm not going to because these ones should be fine as long as I can get them cleaned up. So they all have a little cotter pin in the bottom so I got to take that out and then like this one I already took out so now I should be able to take a hammer and smack this off. And it should come out the other side. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these, get these out, and then we'll clean them up. This one came out, but they were seized in there. And I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be able to slide in there. Because if you look at the other side, I'm not 100% sure about this, but if you look at the other side, there's these little, like, things on here. And when this is fully engaged and locked in there, it actually pushes on these out. And when they're not, they can move in. So it just, yeah, like that moves. So I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be able to move in there. And these were completely packed full of, well, this is probably just old grease, honestly, but none of these moved. I had to hammer all of them out. So I'm sure this is going to be way better for the clutch. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't working right at all. So... This will be way better. I probably should get new ones of these, but honestly, these look fairly decent. I just need to clean all this surface up and they should work just like new. So, got one more down here that should be almost out. Yeah. So, yeah, they all had like grease in them or something. So, I'm just gonna get these all cleaned up and we'll get this put back together and we should be good. Figured I'd show you what I'm doing to kind of restore these studs. So I wire brushed them, got all the dirt and other stuff off of them. I had to go out and buy this die. I didn't have one that was a 916-18 fine thread. So, But these threads were kind of all messed up on here and just full of rust and everything. So I thought that was pretty important. And it's nice to just have another die that I will probably use again at some point. Other problem with this one is it's pretty big and I don't actually have the wrench to put onto it, so I just have to use this big boy. 
but it works. So getting this started is the trickiest part. I think the first one I did was the hardest one, but I think the rest of these are not terrible enough to where it's hard to get them started, but that one I'm pretty sure is started. So just put it on here a little bit and then double check it. Pretty sure. Let's take it back off and just make sure it's started correctly. Because if it's not, that will mess everything up. Yep, it looks good. So it's pretty obvious if it starts crossing the threads. So, so put that on there. Put a little oil on here. I just have some WD-40, so it'll probably work fine. And then we'll run this down all the way. Pretty much all the way now. And we'll back it back off. Coming back off, it should get loose enough that we can just do it by hand. Nice clean threads. And then we'll wipe this down. Make sure that's straight. And then a little strip of sandpaper. I'm gonna clean this shaft up here too. And that should do it. That thing looks like new now. We need to clean the holes out on the uh, pulley here as well. They go all the way through because I'm sure they have a bunch of muck in there as well. I used to have a bunch of wire brushes like this that were bigger, but all I have is a couple of these little ones now. I've pretty much used them all up. Probably need to get some more, but I'll just use these. Not quite big enough, but hopefully I can get it cleaned out enough with this. I guess we can see if they fit in there nice. Yeah. Nice and loose. So I'm actually gonna put some lubricant on these, some uh, grease. All right, so now that that's done, we should be able to put some new cotter pins in there to hold them in and we can get all this put back on the tractor. All right, we're now back to where I was. So. This was the problem, was putting this disc on. So hopefully, everything will just line up now. And go in there. It's still not going on. <laughs> Why not? All right, so after grinding these holes down quite a bit, it shouldn't matter, there's plenty of material left there. Um, this goes on nice and smooth now. So sits flat on there and it can still move oh, I thought it did <laughs> there we go so sits flat on there it can still move so we should be good there now that was a little bit of a pain in the butt but that's what you get with aftermarket parts you know I got it cleaned up it's uh not perfectly flat but I think that once the discs wear in, it'll be fine. It's not perfect, but I don't think these things ever are. So anyway, let's slide this on here. Like that. The last piece would be this. We need to take this disc out. Took that one out, put this one in with the friction or the slots facing towards this plate. Springs sit on that, so these will sit on here. We line up, hopefully. This should line up. <laughs> It'd be weird if this didn't. Oh, it's not, honestly. Ugh. There we go. I think some of that is just the springs holding it out. Yeah. So, just make sure this disc plate is Staying on there, which it is. So now we gotta get these bolts on here, or the nut. I was also looking at these little um, convex washers on Steiner tractor, and for my serial number and up, you actually, it says you don't need these. But they were already on the tractor, 
But, I mean, they were saying you didn't need them, but I'm going to use them anyway, I suppose, because I have them, and I really don't see how they could hurt putting them on. So, we're going to put them on. And then we have our new nuts, new castle nuts. Put these on. Luckily, my springs are still okay. Like, none of them were broken, so we can probably still get away with not having those replaced for now. Let's tighten these all down together, so. All right. Okay, that is not tight enough, <laughs> so we'll go more. It's starting to lock in, but it's still really light. One. One, one. Still light. Half a turn. Half a turn. Half a turn. That's locking in pretty decent now. Right now, the clutch is engaged. And I can push it all the way back here before it starts to disengage because of all the slop in this linkage here. It's ridiculous. I really need to replace the bushings probably. That's how bad that is. <laughs> it does lock in pretty decent. I don't, I don't know how tight it should be, but it seems pretty good to me. Probably good enough to at least uh, test it out and see. I put a bigger battery in it and I put a new terminal on the positive. That was the one that was sparking last time and it actually melted the terminal end off. So put that on there. I tightened them down so now there's hopefully a good connection there. And yeah, we're just gonna stir it up and hopefully not drive through the back of the garage. Um, if it does start and the clutch feels okay, I'm going to back it out of here and go for a little spin, I suppose. I do have the brake on. It's not in gear. Clutch is disengaged. You guys told me not to give it full throttle, so we'll give it that much throttle instead because that's full. So that's like half throttle. Um, we're gonna give it some choke and then hope and pray that we did everything correctly and it'll fire up fine. See what happens. Let's see, just in case it starts to move on its own, I'm gonna turn this throttle off. Starter's good. Our battery connection somehow. I heard it spark. No idea. This one I can't actually tighten down, but it's never sparked before, so I don't know. Let's try it again. I kind of think the uh, um, power cable that goes to the starter. I feel like it has a ground in it somewhere, so that's not great. <laughs> Try again.
We're too high, we had to let some air out. was extremely tight so got it out I'm gonna pump up the front tires and then we'll take it for a spin. Alright I think everything's working alright It's always fun to try to record with because you have to use three hands to run the thing. I gotta hold this back and then put it in gear, but you have to let it move a little bit or else it won't go over there. And then you gotta hold it, put it up there, put it in gear, and then you can let this go. <laughs> to another gear. How about, oh, gotta remember to keep that down. Now we can go into second. We don't want to turn. Put that into gear. Yay, it's working. It's actually kind of nice to have this out of the garage and running again. I guess it was running after we did the head gasket, but I haven't actually been able to test it really. So I suppose let's go on a little journey. We're gonna have to go into a higher gear. Let's go into like fourth. That'll be a more fun, I think. That ought to work. Alright, we gotta head down here. Whee! Turn back up here. Just because I'm lazy and don't want to open a gate. Seems to be working good though. Maybe we should go a little faster. Go up here, we'll do fifth gear up this hill. Let's see what happens. be out here before you know it. We got good oil pressure. Temperature is still on 140. It hasn't, I don't know if it's ever even moved off there, honestly. I'm not 100% sure if that works. Speaking of which, uh, one of you guys actually sent me some gauges and I don't know who sent them. Um, it had no name on it or anything, so yeah, thank you, but I don't know who sent it, unfortunately. Nice little tour of the property.
So this is actually where the track used to be, right through here. It's kind of gotten a little overgrown. Chains are dragging on the three point. Wow, this has gotten really overgrown. Holy cow. Ah! We made it. I finally burned my big pile of wood out here. This is just all weeds because that's where all the trees were. I need to mow that off. Not much wood left there. Let's see if we can turn in here. No power steering makes this a little bit of a pain to drive. Beautiful. All right. Very steep. All right, well, I wanted to turn back there. Now we got to loop around. I really want to turn on the steep hill, so we're going this way. Things run really good though. So the whole point of me putting this here is so I can roll start it down this hill. This is actually a very steep hill here. And this is exactly what my wife's grandfather did with his tractors. I actually have a photo of him parking his tractors on this exact hill right here. Um, I don't know if I can use the photo though because it's not technically mine. So I'm probably not gonna put it in the video, unfortunately, because I don't want to get in trouble for using it. Um, it has a big watermark on it and stuff, so I'm not going to put it in the video, unfortunately. And I was gonna buy the picture, but to buy it was like $115, so I'm just not going to do that right now. Um, anyway, so yeah, he always parked his tractors here. He never had batteries in them, so yes the john deere is going to be outside from now on but you got to think my grandpa when he owned this i talked to my mom and my grandma and they both said that this tractor the entire time my grandpa owned it sat outside it never once saw inside of a building so i figure it's just carrying on tradition of the tractor sitting outside so that's going to be it. I will get the cans and put back on the exhaust and intake, just to make sure the weather stays out of the engine and stuff. But it's going to be outside from now on, unfortunately. And the other reason too is I'm actually losing most of my interior space because the Ford Falcon, I had a cover on it and it sat outside almost all the time with the cover on it. But for some reason, it's still getting water in it. So I don't know, maybe the cover is going bad or something, but it, it never got water in it for years and then all of a sudden it just started getting water in it so i can't have that so it actually took the spot of the kubota in this garage and the kubota took the spot of this john deere so yep <laughs> that's about it so i am going to try to uh jump th start this down the hill make sure everything works i'm going to take the battery out first shouldn't matter whether the battery's in there or not but I'm going to take it out, set it there, and then I'm going to jump start it down this hill and hopefully 
it works. So let's see. All right, hopefully I get this in the frame. Shouldn't take much to get it going, so let's see what happens. I must have just been right on a flat spot or something and it just barely wouldn't move but just a little turning of the tire and got it rolling so yeah I mean that's gonna work for me it, that's way better I hate having to get a battery to put in this and the charging system doesn't work so this is just kind of the best of both worlds I don't need a battery I don't have to worry about the charging system yeah it sits outside but whatever it'll be fine so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know you guys really love the John Deere tractor. The last video just did amazing. I really appreciate all of that. Um, I got, yeah, I think we're up to over 700,000, 700,000. I think we're up to over 7,000 subscribers now. So that's just incredible to me. So it, it's just, it's really good that you guys are supporting me in that way. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I do have some more things that I can do uh with this john deere like i said when i was riding it somebody sent me all new gauges for this um i don't know who sent them though I, there's no return address there's no letter no nothing so whoever sent those thank you for that i really appreciate that um it seems that this clutch is pretty well working just fine we're gonna have to get something on there like a plow or something and start like pulling something heavier with it to actually know for sure if it's um uh tight enough or engaging properly but for just driving it around we went in fifth gear up that fairly steep hill and it didn't slip or anything so for now it's fine and yeah that's gonna be it thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one